1949, Casey Douglas and Robert Geddens wrote a song about a car. To be specific, a Mercury. Now out of production since 2010, but boy, in those days, what a great car to have. And you've heard the expression sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Well, I'm not sure about the drugs, but the uh, sex and the rock and roll, um, I guess we're okay with that. You might want to add cars to that list. So many great songs have been written around the idea of a wonderful car. This song has been covered by uh, country artists Alan Jackson, Dwight Yoakam, uh, a fabulous and different version by Steve Miller, a recent version by Jackson Brown, and the, the version I think we're going to kind of hover around today uh, by David Lindley. Here's Mercury Blues on Song Mentor. Well, so often these really straight-ahead songs that were written in an earlier day and then redone several times come down to, to a key choice. What key do I want to play it in? And uh, David Lindley must have had his lap steel um, tuned to, to F because um, it isn't, it's particularly easy to play this song in F. Um, so I think we're going to stay away from that. Um, Alan Jackson's version is in D, which is... Uh, if, we, if we transpose the ideas from David Lindley's version uh, with the lap steel there into Alan Jackson's key, it works quite well. But after considering all aspects of this, by the way, Steve Miller's is in F sharp. Uh, and, and so everybody plays it in a different key. Um, I think we're going to go with the key of E in this one, and we're just going to modify that lick a little bit that Lindley plays. And that's a pretty cool way to play that intro. Um, and so we're going we're gonna to go with the key of E. After much debate, here are the chords you need. You need that open E, or an E5. We're basically going to concentrate on the 6 and 5 strings there. You need an A5, or an open A chord. Back to the E. You need a D flat 5. D flat major. Also a B, E flat, E flat, five bar chord. Okay, and that should really do it. Um, this is a song that's driven by the rhythm section again. You know, the, the the playing in this song is all peripheral to the essential driving rhythms and chord progressions of the rhythm section in the song. So that's we're going to kind of focus on that, and then we'll give you a few little bits that you can add to this to spice it up. We should have time for a full playthrough on this one too. So let's uh, let's start with that uh, opening rhythm. So if we were actually playing what David Lindley plays in the key of E, uh, it would be. It's a little bit of a struggle. We got to go up here or here. And I think, just for the sake of what it is, you know, this. If I were playing this song uh, live with my band, that's I think we'd adapt it and just do that, and people would love that opening riff. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. So to make, that's really easy, and all I'm doing there is I've got this E chord fingered, and then I'm just going to lift off uh, the B note and the E note off the fifth and fourth strings and put them back down. I'm actually hammering down on the B note. And then kind of playing the E5 chord. So the right hand would look like this. tempo is pretty up on this song. It re David Lindley's version really cooks. It really moves quickly. So that gives you the intro. You, you would want to do this. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to add one little bit to that because I watched a version with uh, David Lindley and Jackson Brown playing live. And what they did was they took that, um, they took that to an A chord a couple times right after the intro. So it would sound like this. was was just just going to that A chord a couple times and uh, that's what they did Okay, let's put the chords on the screen and um, go through the structure, the chord structure of a verse. If I had money, I'd tell you what I'd do. I'd go down, down by Mercury or two. I'm crazy about Mercury. I'm crazy about Mercury. I'm gonna buy me Mercury and cruise it up and down the road. One of the cool things about this, uh, the David Lindley version, is that diversion from the traditional 1-4-5 blues pattern. Instead of E, A, E, A, B, A, E, in the, tr in the typical blues fashion, uh, the D flat to the B chord is really a, a nice diversion there. A really cool way to, um, to change this song up a little bit. Um, and, and the ending bit there is just... Uh, going from an E chord to an E sus chord. Easiest way to do it for me, and I think for you as well, is just to play the open E chord and then just flatten out your pinky finger. Just flex it at the joint there so that you pick up the A note on the G string, on the third string, second fret. One of the things we can do here to kind of recreate that slide feel and have some fun instrumentally during the uh, instrumental breaks in, in the middle of the song is uh, use this, um, we use this in the bad to the bone lesson as well. And what I'm really doing there is just taking that a little bar A chord using my first finger across the fourth, third, and second strings and sliding it up to where I want it to be to recreate a slide feel. Now for this song, we want to go from E to A back to E, and then we want to go to the D flat, which is actually a D flat minor. Uh, we didn't cover that earlier. I called it a D flat five because we... But if we played the full chord, it would have been a D minor. been a D flat minor. So when we go to play the slide bit, we're going to have to make that a minor formation. So the chords you want instrumentally here and the slide where you want the slide to be is the ninth fret to begin with. And then when it goes to the A, you want to take it up five to the 14th fret. I took it down there back to the E by stopping at the 12th fret, just for flavor there. 
and then we want to finish up by going down to that minor formation so instead of having that flat bar across uh, it would normally be here Do you hear that doesn't sound right so we need to make that a minor so as if we're playing an A minor chord but up here uh, first finger on the fifth fret of the second string second and third fingers on the sixth fret of the third and fourth strings then we go back to the the A formation across the fourth fret. So and finish up there, where where the phrase, the full phrase of the uh, instrumental verse finishes up. So again, just quickly, we're gonna go to nine. Stop a quick stop at. 12 and then back down to 9 from 14 to 12 to 9 and then we're going to go A minor here so what I've done now is I've put together two playthroughs of this one at a slower speed so you can kind of play with it a little bit and then we'll take it up to speed with the second playthrough Okay, just before we get to that full playthrough, uh, let's talk about how this song is going to end. And it ends uh, with a repeat of the first verse. The fifth verse is actually a repeat of the first verse. And of course, like most uh, blues songs or many songs, it repeats the last line uh, twice vocally and three times altogether, the third time just instrumentally. So if I just walk you through that last verse, it would be like this. If I had money, So you know what? what's different there it, it, is it goes which is really cool it goes to the A there instead of the E so for those two uh, vocal lines I'm gonna buy me That's the ending.
fine-tuning for Mercury Blues. Well, I hope you enjoyed that version of the song. Most of it's taken from, from the David Lindley version. We slowed the tempo down a little bit, but essentially the chord pattern and progression is from David Lindley's version of this song, which includes that alternative um, blues progression that took us to a D-flat minor and a B instead of the traditional B-A, which is very, very cool. Uh, some neat riffing in this song. And I uh, hope you had fun with uh, the, the alternative slide work that we tried to show you there. All right, David Lindley, Jackson Brown, Steve Miller, Mercury Blues. We'll see you next time on Song Mentor.